all, my name is Sarah Dichi Rhymes of Peachy. Today we're doing a first look of the new Magic Keyboard for the iPad 2020, but also it works with the 2018, so welcome to the channel. And today we're celebrating me wearing um, real pants for the first time in a month. These don't stretch at all, it's awful. Okay, let's start with an unboxing. It just slides on out, ooh. So this is the normal keyboard, it has two levels and then a straighter level like that. This, you can float your iPad on. And it has a trackpad. Ooh. Ho, ho. Ho, ho. There it is. Okay, seems pretty solid. Oh wow, that hinge is just hecka strong. Okay, so it snaps. A little comparison there. Wow. So it can go, oh, you have a ton of flexibility. That went down kind of fast. It stops here. It doesn't go any farther back from this hinge, but then you just move your iPad. So I've been using the Magic Keyboard for the past few days of the new iPad 2020. That review of the new iPad will come out, I'm gonna say first week of May. I'm holding myself to it. I'm gonna walk you through all of the trackpad gestures that you need to know with the new iPad OS in this video as well. And then hey, maybe you're sticking with the smart folio case and you wanna know how to connect an Apple mouse or non-Apple mouse to the iPad for the mouse support. We're gonna talk about that too, but let's hop into it and start with the ergonomics. The floating aspect of this keyboard is actually pretty cool. And it's easy to snap on and off and it's sturdy. And even the viewing angle like this was very helpful when I was in my closet recording for my podcast. It's quiet in there, but I had this up above and it was great. You know, it's great to have that versatility because I'm used to a smart folio, only having two options. Having the second USB-C on the hinge of the case comes in handy for charging and it almost seems like magic, you know. This connects via magnets and it's charging just through these three pins. And again, thank goodness that the 2018 iPad Pro models also have all of the magnets, the connectors that make this possible. I expected Apple to be like, hey, new iPads, and you can only use this case with the new iPads, and they didn't do that. I'm proud of you, Apple. So it's definitely top heavy, obviously, um, but it's not finicky at all. You know, you can carry it around. Yeah, it feels awkward, but it works. And you know, I get the hot takes that, hey, Apple giving us a keyboard and a trackpad. This means Microsoft was right with the Surface Pros. They did it right from the beginning. And yeah, that's true. But if you think about it, Microsoft and Apple, they're both trying to accomplish the same thing, but they're getting there from different starting points. iPad, it started with touch. It forced developers to say, hey, we have to develop for touch. People aren't even thinking about using their iPad as a laptop, so we have to prioritize that. The Microsoft Surface Pro and all of the different two-in-ones, they're laptops, right? And touch is the second priority. So they have the laptop experience down, but they lack in all of the cool apps, the touch apps. Like, you know, I use the Dell XPS two-in-one all the time. And I use Microsoft OneNote because it's the only notes app that you can actually find in the Microsoft store and is compatible with the Dell two-in-one pin and also the iPad pin, iPad pencil, not pen. Oh. There we go. So it's not about who is better, it's about what are your needs? Do you need a laptop first or an iPad touch experience first? But this gets me very curious to see who wins the race of having it all. And this is a good step in the right direction for Apple. So it's Apple. They're not always the first one to do it, but when they do it, they do it well. Obviously I cover two in ones a lot on my channel and this is my favorite form factor when it comes to tablet and laptop in one. But this has been, again, compared to the Surface Pro a ton, and well, the Magic Trackpad is just such a better experience when 
it's on your lap. This is the Surface Pro, right? It has the thing in the back where you can set it up, but then the keyboard is so flimsy. They're like, yeah, this can be a laptop, but you have to find a hard surface if you wanna use it. Using this on your lap is just a nightmare. This, this stays sturdy. So when you close this guy up, carry it around, you know, it has some weight to it. It really does. I don't have one of those like smaller digital scales, so the only way for me to to weigh this entire thing was for me to get on the scale and then get on the scale with the iPad and subtract. And that was the first time that I weighed myself in a while. So that was terrifying. But after I did the math, it came out to 2.9 pounds, all of this together. But I don't know how accurate that is. So, hey guys, as I'm finishing uh, this video, people in Australia and ahead of the US time are getting their magic keyboards. And so the official weight uh, for people who have a, a proper scale is uh, for the 12.9 inch iPad Pro plus the Magic Keyboard. It's a total of three pounds. So I wasn't too off. I said 2.9. Uh, um, but I'm already seeing in forums that people are like, oh, that's too heavy. That's ridiculous. Blah, blah, blah. Um, which is kind of weird because it's like, one, well, this is the first iteration. Two, it's sturdy. Like, I don't, like, you can't tell unless you get your hands on one. Like, it, you saw me holding up the iPad upside down. Um, and I think it's gonna be, you know, a tad hefty um, if you want a good experience with it, if you want something super sturdy. Um, and I don't think it's ridiculous for an iPad plus a keyboard and trackpad to be the same weight as a 13 inch MacBook Air. You know, a MacBook Pro 16 is much heavier than that. And so um, it's weird because when people start comparing, oh, I might as well just carry around my MacBook Pro. Well, if you're already thinking of that, then like, yeah, you probably don't need an iPad. Just buy the $329 one to like do chill stuff on. But um, this is, you know, this is for the people who are like using the iPad as their computer. So yeah, on the heavier side, but I don't think it deserves as much like uproar as it's already getting so i know by the time that this video is being posted um the weight is what everyone is going to be talking about so i guess debate in the comments but be nice to each other the material on this case is the same as the smart folio um it's really soft to the touch and really nice however it does show smudges the round cursor is fun and it's cool how it forms to the different apps it makes selections especially in apple apps super easy we'll just have to wait for other apps to optimize for that um, because you know a pointy cursor is always going to be more accurate uh, when pointing at things <laughs> so time will tell uh, i'm looking forward to apps like OneNote to be able to switch on and off from the circle into the straight line for the text selection. Because you're still selecting text like the classic touch way, um, and that's not super fun, but of course when you go over to Apple Notes, it's super, super smooth. There are two different places and settings to tweak the trackpad and cursor control. You can go to general and trackpad to change a click from a tap, and then also accessibility and pointer control to control how fast your cursor goes. So I was using my iPad as my laptop the past few days, not editing videos on it, but doing everything else. And once you start really using this keyboard, which is super nice, by the way, the action is great and it's just all around magic, but you start to miss certain keys that you have on laptops, like the escape key, the volume controls, the brightness controls, but that's a little gripe. I'm glad these keyboards aren't mushy because I'm used to tablet keyboards being mushy and they're not, it's fantastic. The trackpad, it's very easy to navigate with and the gestures are very easy to learn if you're familiar with iPad OS or Mac OS. However, if you're used to the magic trackpad or you're used to MacBook trackpads, this trackpad is so small in comparison. You get used to it, of course, but when you're using it, I just, I overshoot things a lot because I just think I have more room, right? So let's do a quick run through of all of the gestures that you need to know. This obviously also applies to if you have a magic trackpad and you already have the smart folio case, you know, you don't think you're gonna use it a lot, so maybe it's worth it to just carry this around every now and then. And yeah, these gestures apply to this too. All you do is you turn it on, you go into the Bluetooth set, 
settings, a mouse pops up, you click on it and you're good to go. So a three finger swipe up goes to the home screen, three finger swipe up with the pause is the app switcher, three finger swipe left and right shuffles between apps, two finger click or tap is the right click and showing the dock is a weird one. So you either move the cursor super quickly to the bottom of the screen or once you're there, you just push past it a little bit more. But what's even weirder is if you keep pushing past that, it takes you to the home screen. So there's like three orders of bringing the cursor down to the bottom. Tap the status bar in the top right for control center and you can move your cursor to the top of the iPad for notification center. You drag and drop apps for multitasking, just like if you're interacting with it with touch. And then you can adjust them by holding down the top bar and moving them accordingly. To move in between your slide over windows, I wish you could just go to that bottom bar and then swipe, but you have to click the bottom bar and then swipe. So again, you can do all these gestures with the latest magic trackpad uh, and also most of them with the magic mouse. However, the first magic mouse does not work with these gestures. Okay, Sarah, that's great and all, but what if I have a mouse and an iPad. I don't want to mess with a trackpad. I'm excited for mouse support. How do I set up this guy? So this is an MX Master 3. I'm a big fan of Logitech mouses. So now let's show you how to get this set up and maybe do some custom controls. If you're like, hey, I was only interested in the trackpad. Well, thank you for watching. Let me know if you like this video and hit that subscribe button down below for new videos every week. And also, hey, the world is crazy right now. If you need some more content to watch or listen, I have a podcast, That Creative Life, where keeping things positive and creative over there. Okay, so switching over to my MX Master 3 and uh, spoiler alert, I actually like using a mouse kind of better than a trackpad. It seems more natural to replace the touch with a clicking of the mouse. You're gonna connect this mouse via Bluetooth just like the trackpad. Right out the gate, left click, right click, and the vertical scroll works perfectly. The horizontal scroll is a little janky, but in most cases you can scroll left to right like you do with touch and that you're just going to click and slide. So I wanna assign the two buttons on the side of the mouse to some custom controls that are more natural to do on the trackpad. So you go to accessibility, touch, assistive touch, and then you click on your connected device. Click the customize add buttons, click the corresponding button and what you want. And I got a little fresh frustrated that you couldn't assign the thumb button to a custom control, but then I realized without changing anything, the MX Master automatically goes home when you press the thumb button. And then when you hold it, it goes into the other app switcher mode where on the Mac, you basically hold down command and toggle with tab in between the apps. So the idea here is to assign the buttons to something that would be annoying to do if you were using a mouse. Like you would have to remove your hands and click the two buttons for a screenshot or hold your Apple pencil and swipe up from the the left hand corner. And yeah, all in all, I actually thoroughly enjoyed the mouse experience. So I hope this video was helpful for you. Again, the mouse support is not exclusive to the iPad Pro. It's any iPad that has the latest iPad OS. So let me know how you're enjoying that. Are you using your iPad more? In terms of who should buy this, I've been using the iPad in this setup a ton. Even when it was just the smart folio, it basically stayed in its case like almost all the time. I think that's a characteristic of the bigger iPad 12.9 inch though. It's amazing for sidecar. It's amazing for uh, basically just being a laptop. But when you get the 11 inch in your hands, you know, it's so much smaller and honestly more comfortable in your hands. Uh, like my dad has an 11 inch iPad and he just holds it like this and plays his games and do, does all of his stuff. So if you have an 11 inch and you don't do a lot of heavy lifting, honestly, when you need it, maybe you can just connect a mouse that you have, but going out of your way to spend another $299 for your iPad, I don't know, I just, I don't know. Overall, I'm excited where this takes the iPad Pro because you guys know, I know I've mentioned this many times, I'm all about that two-in-one life. So this is Apple going towards that, I think. So let me know if you like this video. Hit that subscribe button down below for new videos every single week. Check out my podcast, That Creative Life. Let me know what you think of the Magic Trackpad and the new iPad review coming out soon. Stay peachy. Okay, bye.